I'm Alex Rackle from Board Game Co. and today I'm reviewing Forge Flame from Lord Raccoon Games. Forge Flame is a 2-4 player resource gathering set collection game which players are going to be venturing further and further into this mine in order to gather various gems and resources, convert those into cards, and try to have as much points as possible before time runs out. This is a prototype all rules and components of exchange and of course I'll have a link to the crowdfunding campaign down below. But let's talk about how you play this game. The basic idea is you're going to start by drafting a team. There's a whole process for how that works, but you're going to choose your characters from the available characters over here and they do have asymmetric decks, asymmetric abilities, as they try to venture or if they in load capacity as far as how much they can carry. But then once you have your team crafted, you're going to put all the various characters over here. Right now it's set up for a two player game, three miniatures per character. In a three player game, you're also going to have three miniatures. And in a four player game, you'll have two miniatures per character. And those are going to be going forth into the dungeon as you take actions from your starting hand of cards. You see, you're going to divide your cards up into the advanced cards and the basic cards. You're going to construct your deck from the basic cards of the characters you've chosen, draw your hand of cards, and use those for your actions. Because you're going to take turns taking actions and there are four basic actions. There's going to be moving into the dungeon, gathering various gems, attacking things, and then flipping over mining effectively these resource tokens over here, which we don't have that right now. Let's go ahead and grab one of these as a starting card and see if we can uh, show you a bit of everything. Let's put that back into our deck over here. And so over here you can see all the four basic actions, moving, mining, gathering, and fighting. To that end, you're going to go ahead and play a card. Let's say we go ahead and play this card right now and we move our mine card one into the dungeon over here. That's going to be this wild action. Each card starts with the wild action and then we're going to go ahead and flip this over and you can take this in any order and over here we're going to go ahead and gather these three gems over here plus that gem we're also going to go ahead and put a kobold into the dungeon because of the kobold symbol and the kobold's going to steal the most valuable gem taking it and putting it into their bag where you might be able to get it back later if you are willing to fight the kobold now the downside is, unfortunately, because of the kobold there, you can't interact further with the various gems on the table. These gems are being guarded by the kobold, so you have to go ahead and do something about that. So let's go ahead and look at the special ability text. Play this card immediately after a knobs card, which this card has this additional ability that you can get a bunch of rapid fire turns in by playing this card. Knobs, and his mind card over here, likes to go quickly through the dungeon, but we're playing a drop inefficiently as we go. The other player will go ahead and go. Let's say they go ahead and play a card, and they move their gelatinous cube. Actually, gelatinous cube is my team. They move their genio over here and they walk over here and maybe they go ahead and they maybe do a door with double walk moving further into the dungeon trying to make their way past there although I should note some of the lines in the dungeon can only be crossed with flight symbols you'll notice they're missing here that's a prototype error but all these hard lines have flight symbols which means you need flight to cross them so this person is going to go one two into this region and they're going to reveal this token over here in general in the game you're going to have various tokens you can reveal that's going to go ahead and give me a treasure icon which is worth between one to three points or well three that's not bad at all I'm going to put that off to the side but then almost all the regions except for these th starting three over here are going to have various tokens you can get to get various additional benefits as you move through the dungeon. Back to my turn over there. I'm going to go ahead and look at my hand a little more carefully this time. I could ignore Cavens with that, but you know what? Honestly, none of these cards are that strong for me. So I think I'm going to go ahead and go. I'm going to play this card to go ahead. Oh, I have to use the right character. I have to use the right character. Let's go ahead and use this one over here. We're going to go ahead and fight this guy over here. So we're going to reach into the bag and we're going to gather out one of the tokens and see what we got. And yes, there are gems in here, but there's also these tokens unfortunately I failed in that combat. There are different tokens in the fight over here which will give you success or even let you take additional gems from the bag once you have successfully conquered those kobolds. In my case I didn't get quite so lucky so it is what it is and I'll continue by taking a move action and farthering further into the dungeons. Let's go ahead and wander down here take a look at this over here. That's going to give me another treasure tokens. They're not all treasure tokens but I got a one not nearly as good as my friend over there. But that's the basic idea as far as the general movement around. You're going to be playing cards. Those cards let you move around the dungeon. You're going to play cards let you pick things up and you have to match it to the character you have to be mindful of that so if you have this character over here unless we have our gelatinous cube over here let's pretend this guy is no longer here we can use our gelatinous cube to take two pickup actions taking these and yes putting them into that guy's mouth all the characters have a clever way of how they hold their gems you can go ahead and put card tokens on the mine card over here you're going to have their own resource carrying limits anywhere between one to three gems that they can carry as they're moving through the dungeon and the reason you're collecting these gems because we haven't heavily touched upon that is to craft these various cards you're going to have cards that give you a various number of points, but also potential set collection bonuses for gathering cards of the same set. There's a whole bunch of flavor text and the title of the card. Sadly, those are not rules. They're just uh, flavor text, which I uh, would love to have some abilities on those cards. But you're going to have these cards you're trying to gather, and you need to take your gems and either go back up to the top of the mine over here, in which you'll be able to go ahead and craft those gems, or alternatively, doing so in the center region. The only downside, the center region is more accessible once you venture forth into the dungeon, but it does have a limit of flames, and as 
as you craft those flames, they are going to get uh, stuck. You have to basically wait till the event round over here, where you may actually go ahead and recast the flame of the internal fours. We we happen to draw the top card there that is going to completely recast the flame. Sometimes you get nothing, sometimes you get one or two. That's simply relighting the entire eternal forge. So again, quick recap over here. Four basic actions on your turn you play a card, you have a hand of five cards, you will take four actions in a round, that fifth card will not be played, so you have four actions in a round, those actions are moving around the dungeon, and you'll collect various bonuses as you move into areas, flipping various tokens, mining effectively, and flipping these tokens over, only to put new gems into play, and possibly having kobolds show up, and possibly stealing some of your gems. You're also going to have the ability to go ahead and pick up gems, assuming there's not a kobold in that area, and then lastly you're going to have the ability to actually fight the kobolds to be able to get rid of them, because they also are one of the end game mechanics mechanics in the game, so you want to be mindful if too many kobolds can trigger endgame, and once all players have taken four actions, you're going to go ahead and flip over a new event card over here, and see what comes up, and sometimes the kobolds will actually take actions, moving towards the eternal flame, or engaging with characters, or stealing gems, or possibly spawning new kobolds in different areas, these ones actually over here involve them spawning, so you have new kobolds popping into the board, that could be an endgame trigger if you're not careful, and you're doing all that to gather these resources to be able to go ahead and craft them either above ground, or at the eternal flame, the eternal forge, in order to get those resources, in order to get those cards and hopefully have as many points as possible by the time end game triggers that is basically how you play forge flame so let's go ahead and dive into the review starting off with uh ease of play ease of play on this one pretty straightforward the action is only four basic actions there's some additional rules text, some small things we didn't get into. You know, gonna have some of these that are uncovered as you uncover certain of the tokens over here. These will give you extra actions you can trade in. There's gonna be different things, small nuances, but the basic idea at the end of the turn, we didn't talk about this part, but at the end of the turn, you're going to go ahead and draft a card into your hand from your advanced pool, giving you the opportunity to deck build with a degree of agency and choice over what's coming out, both taking into account their special abilities as well as the unique actions to be able to build out a better deck that suits what you're trying to do with your three character three characters. So some small stuff like that, but the basic basic idea of the game is pretty straightforward with those four basic actions and how you utilize those actions to be able to move, explore, fight, and gather resources and gems to be able to go ahead and convert them into cards, which is ultimately the end game trigger or one of the end game triggers and how you get as many points as possible. As far as what I like, don't like, and can see others not liking, starting off with what I like, which is to begin with the great art and miniatures in production in general. And again, prototype here, so take all that into account. But I love the overall aesthetic of the art. Uh, Lord of Coon games in general put out very solid looking games and the additional aspect of having the way that each of these carries a miniature like everyone has their own little way that they carry various gems over here so we have this guy over here who can have a little uh, skeleton handful of gems we see if we can show you this over here skeleton handful of gems a little one in its mouth over here you have each character have different ways of controlling or holding on to different gems which is a nice additional nice touch to the experience although not that it makes a good game but it's a nice extra touch to be able to immerse you into the experience the asymmetric teams and the fact that you have that progressive deck building as you go through it so you can draft a team and each character Character does have different advantages as far as how they operate and what they're better at and then you also have that ab ability to be able to go ahead and deck build into the right cards at the right time this system is a system i've seen before in other games i've seen it in uh the witcher i've seen it in the few and the cursed but basically systems in which you can go ahead and deck build at the end of the round directly into the deck that you're building so you're not just building for the future but you're building into the right now and that gives you a degree of agency over what you're doing which is a nice little quality of life improvement not always the right fit for every single game but it's the right fit for many games and i like it here as well and so the unique upgradable decks the fact that you're working with different characters each with their own decks some basic cards some advanced cards and the way you're going to upgrade it and that combined with the general quick playing turns in the game you're only taking two actions as you go and so it's usually pretty quick i'm gonna go ahead and uncover that. I'm going to gather resources. I'm going to fight the kobold. I'm going to move deeper into the dungeon. You go to the mine or whatever it is. So you're going to have quick playing turns as you go through it. It is a fast moving, fast resolving experience. As far as what I don't like in the game, uh, first of all, the game is fairly light. And that is what it is. It's a target audience kind of thing. For me, I would say the game weight is lighter than what I'm personally looking for. The decision space, because you only have those four actions, because it ultimately comes down to trying to just gather gems and convert them in, I didn't feel there was a lot of tension around the various choices I was making. It felt fairly straightforward. So that could make for a good gateway game. For me, it's going to be a less satisfying experience. I'll also say that the carrying limitations in the game were very noticeable in a way that was frustrating as opposed to something I tactically had to work around. Characters often have one, two, or three gems, and when you're crafting things that frequently have three gems, which means most characters can't actually carry three gems, and you actually have to get the right three gems, very often you have to have your characters converge at a mine in order to be able to craft. To me, that felt like just a, a irritating nuisance as opposed to, like, look at how I'm cleverly going to work my way around that. It's it, You could work your way around it, make no mistake, but I just didn't feel clever for doing so. I felt that the game's like, hey, by the way, these things cost three resources to make. Most of you guys don't carry three, so, um... 
work together and make sure you all meet up there, which felt like a little bit inefficient, a little bit sat, a little bit less satisfying as far as a gameplay mechanic went. I don't necessarily know what you can fix around that. There's an, always an interesting trade-off as far as stopping players from being able to do things easily in order to have them work away. I just didn't feel that this particular way it was being done was satisfying so much as just a hindrance to a smooth gameplay experience. As far as I can see others not liking, there's some degree of take that in the game would be my main concern. There's definitely a degree of trying to utilize your race abilities to have people drop gems, to take gems, to swap gems from them. There are various different tools at disposal to do so. They're not all over the place, so it's not a crazy take that experience, but especially if you're playing it at higher player counts, you will have a degree of lost time as, again, you try to work your way past somebody else trying to daze you, limit your actions, or just in some way mess with your ability to win the game. And then that combined with the fact that there's random events as well as the random tokens in the game that do have a degree of... of uh, a lack of just a purely equal spread over here, which again, not a big deal for me because then the day this is a lighter experience, but definitely a degree of randomness thrown in here. As far as final thoughts on Forge Flame, I'm uh, okay with Forge Flame. To me, Forge Flame is a, it's a very compelling, charming, beautiful looking experience, but uh, it is very much on the lighter side for me. Uh, for me, in terms of what I'm looking for a game, I want something a bit crunchier, and I can see this being appealing as a gateway game. I don't necessarily know if I feel, I feel gateway games always fall into a weird space as far as some really resonate with me and some I'm like, I'm happy to dive into and play. For me, Forge Flame is a fine experience. I didn't mind playing this one. It's not a bad time, but I think it is a little mechanically lighter than what I'm personally looking for, so I think it will be appealing to some, but a little less so for me and what I'm looking for in a game. For me, it's a 3 out of 5. I had fun with it. It's a totally fine game. It's just a little lighter than what I'm looking for in this space. As far as other game recommendations, first of all, I'd say Ghost Fighting Treasure Hunters had a very similar vibe, I think, as far as the general weight class of the game and who the target audience might be, but one that I think had a bit more going for it. And then if you're looking for a game that has a degree of mining, but with a lot more crunch going on behind it, Deep Rock Galactic from Mood Publishing is going to have a similar theme, similar basic idea, similar of production values, but with a lot more going on behind it. In any case, until next time, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. I hope you found this video helpful, and as always, I hope you have a good one.